Good Sunday evening to you all. How you doing? Got another project here. And I hope I have better luck on this one than I had on the Tektronics. It's, uh, if you watched the video of my yard sale find Sunday morning, uh, the video just before this one, you see that I picked up this uh, off-brand oscilloscope. Thanks to some of my viewers, they're able to find what I couldn't find on the internet. I told you I have no luck finding any information on the internet. Like I tried to look up this scope here. <clears throat> and, um, oh, of course, the label's upside down. Uh, it's um, a general... Atronics, um, but I couldn't find anything, and put, punching in the numbers, I couldn't find anything. But thanks to uh, a couple of my viewers, when I read off the number in the back of the car there on that other video, uh, a couple of the guys uh, gave me the information on that, and that's very helpful. The problem is, uh, I'm going to need a schematic on this, and uh, I don't want to spend $27. Now... This has some hope. Uh, it is a lot of corrosion in here. A lot. Every transistor in here, the metal, they're all metal cased. There's no plastic cased transistors. The small ones, I don't know whether they call them a T05 or what. I used to know all the names, but the larger ones, and I'll show you that. They all got a rough coating, like sand on them, and it's corrosion. Every one of them. Uh, let me take you over here. Uh, I've got the front off of this. I cleaned the screen and uh, left the um, plastic off. Unfortunately, there's no display. I'm getting all my voltages uh, in the three test points that I found in here. Let me take you over here. All right. On the top, it looks like somebody took a hammer to it. You see right on top above the CRT? I took, the, took it all out of the case and I took the bezel off. The bezel's in good shape. CRT isn't broke. CRT filament lights. It looks like somebody took a hammer and whacked it. See how it's bent down there? Um, knob is missing here. I need to use a pair of pliers. This is the model number that I read off. Down here. And this is the plug-in. But it's supposed to be a plug-in. But I, it doesn't come out. It does not come out. Um, and it's missing the red knob here, although this turns. But there's no display at all. <clears throat> and it looks like this is, um, this is where you use to pull out the plug, uh, the uh, plug-in. Um, but it's bent over because somebody probably put this thing down on its face. And that's how knobs get busted on, on uh, pieces of equipment. So let me show you where the corrosion is on this thing. And um, whether I'm getting high voltage or not, I don't know. I've ordered a high voltage probe off of eBay. It's a 30,000 volt, just like the one I used to have. Because I need something to check high voltages. So I've got that coming in about a week. All right, it's not too bad here with the corrosion. Um, transistors are lukewarm after I shut it off, I touch them. All these, these three test points here, the minus 50, the minus 15, and the minus 20, a plus 20 rather, are all pretty much on, pretty, very, very close. Now, if you look down here, you see these transistors right here? They're, they're rough, they're all corroded. Hopefully the leads aren't. They seem to be... They seem to be solid. Fuses are good. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what I tried to look up here. ETC... A Atronics. And then the model number that's on the front. 
I took this plate off, and there's just capacitors and diodes in here, and it has a um, a shellac coating like over them, so I couldn't test the uh, test the diodes without breaking the uh, the seal of the uh, the moisture protection that they put in here. So there's no corrosion in here. If you look straight ahead and to the right, that's the board, and I found one capacitor which I'll have to turn it over to show you. Um, that's on the other side. These are all rectifiers here. They all they all got corroded, corrosion on them. Let me see if I can get you a better shot here. All right. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, you look at them uh, diodes here. I don't even know if I'm in camera. There's all corrosion on them. You, can, you can't really see them maybe that good. These are the electrolytics on here. Down here, there's four of them in there. I'm going to turn this thing over. Before I do, these aren't too bad. Ain't too much corrosion there. See, this board here has like a shellac coating on it. See, it's got a shiny finish. Uh, but the other ones don't. They don't seem to be too bad in here. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get that power, uh, uh, that board out of there. It's got a, a stud coming up that holds the board this way. So it's not a matter of just taking the back out and sliding it out like the Tektronix. This uh, is, is not going to be easy. This is the high voltage transformer here. Let me turn you over and show you. All right. That's the high voltage transformer. But it must have a rectifier inside. Um, it shows a picture of a high voltage transformer on the top, and I'll show you that after. The center lead here, the, the longest stud coming out, it says 2300, 25, I don't remember how many, 2000 some odd volts. Anyways, and it says DC. So there's got to be a rectifier in here. So this is the high voltage transformer. Okay. All right, here's, the, uh, here's a better look at the, uh, the top hat rectifiers that are in here. And there's uh, quite a few of them. You can see them all the way down the end down there on the board, okay? Um, I need to get that board out. Okay, if you look dead ahead here, I'm trying not to wash the video out with too much light on the camera here. And my eyes are shows the video out of focus but then that's my eyes it's probably not the camera you see this first one here right here all right i cut the wires off one fell off here is what came out that's a 60 microfarad 50 volt electrolytic it's pretty heavy it's not a lightweight. So the leads got corroded right off of it. The next one over, you can see where I took that out of there. The next one over is, is running very warm. I can't reach my finger in on the others. But I had to scope on for about five minutes. And um, at no display, of course. And this electrolytic here is running very very warm so it's either a shorted diode or a very leaky capacitor now it also has a three pin plug which is a military type plug and um, it runs on 50 60 cycles on 400 now I don't know maybe I got this set on 400 because I'll tell you why I think that. Look straight down and to the top. You see this thing with the screw on it? It says frequency adjustment right here. Now I tried turning it. It didn't seem to do anything. I just thought maybe this thing is running, it's set for 400 cycles and not 60. All right, here's the, here's the um, 
I think there's enough light that you won't, I won't need the flashlight. This is the high voltage transformer. I tried loosening these screws in anticipation of maybe this cover coming off. Nothing happened, so it's solid. So I don't know what these two screws are. I, re I don't have the service manual on there, so I'm working blindly. Um, so there is a... Um, there's the voltages. I'm trying to get so you don't have too much shadow here. List uh, uh, listings, but it don't say it don't show anything about a diode in here. But underneath it says DC voltage uh, coming out. So it's obviously got to have a rectifier in here. This is the power transformer down here, and I already looked at this very carefully. I put a light in here, but might be too bright for you. Um, it doesn't say anything about setting a tap or anything for the frequency. So I really don't know. Maybe somebody that has worked on this scope might chime in and answer that for me. Because um, maybe it goes from 50 cycles to 400. But I'm not sure if it's switchable when you're using it on 400. And that's why I thought maybe this could be the reason why I'm not getting anything on the screen. Because I'm feeding 60 cycles at 115 instead of 400 cycles at 115 volts. Down here, there don't seem to be too much corrosion most of the corrosion seems to be on on this board here, and I can't get that out because there's nuts and bolts on there holding it. And if you look here, there's a stud coming down with a nut on the bottom. You can't get your wrench in there because you've got a board down here. I really need to get that board out in order to replace all those electrolytics. Because the second one is running warm, and I don't know about the others. And there could be a shorter diode. That board needs to come out. And in order to, for it to come out, I could probably remove all these screws and take this whole back out. Which you'd have to do if you was to pull the CRT anyway. So no, I think the CRT would come out the front. So I really don't know. There's... Too much here that has to be taken apart. Now, <clears throat> this board, I, I lubricated everything on here. Now, this is supposed to be the release for the plug-in. All right, see, I'm loosening that all the way out. Nothing. I put a screwdriver in here and tried to get it out. It does not come out. So what probably is happening is probably a nut or on a, a bolt or something on the back. I wouldn't think they'd build it that way. If they went to the trouble of putting a, a handle on this thing so that you can pull out your, um, your uh, plug-in, you shouldn't have to reach in the, inside the scope and pull it out, uh, take a nut off, a nut or bolt out. But the reason I wanted to get this out to make sure that the contacts are clean. It could be corroded in this plug, which uh, is down. You may not be able to see that. It's down in there. It's a blue um, connector. And I shot some W... Uh, uh, deoxid down in there i had a lot of corrosion even on one of those pins uh, all white stuff it was just sitting there it, it, it disappeared when i sprayed it with deoxid so there's a lot of um a lot of corrosion in this uh scope here i got about 74 volts on the collector of that transistor to the ground uh running the scope for about five minutes a transistor's ice cold uh the other transistors or were lukewarm, but this one's running ice cold. But I'm getting my voltages right there. Voltage is okay. I'm getting uh, voltages off the collectors, and these transistors are running lukewarm. 
And these are almost cold. There's a little corrosion on it, but not much. It's not too bad. And um, this electrolytic, it could be this, this, it could be this um, resistor, but after shutting it down, the back of my finger, I can sense the heat. Feels pretty warm on these electrolytics here, so they could be uh, bad. And um, there's a diode right there. If you're looking at, as you're looking at the capacitor, it's right underneath it. When I put my uh, meter on it, when the diode check, it reads uh, 0.3, uh, I don't know, three, three, three tenths of a volt, both ways. I think it's 0.374 volts, um, both ways. So it could be because it's in circuit, or it could be that the diode's bad. And I'm getting that reading on these diodes here, too. Um, to my surprise, uh, it uses a lot of 1N914s, but they're a lot bigger than the 914s I got off of eBay. So I didn't waste my money on them diodes. So this is going to be a project, and I'm going to give it a try, but I really need to get that low voltage board out of there. And you can see that stud right there going down to the top of the, well, the bottom of the high voltage transformer housing. Okay. So even if I pull this back out, I'm not going to be able to get this out. I can't get in there and work in there. It's too cramped. Uh, but that's a support because that board is rigid. But I need to get that out of there. I need to check those diodes and replace those capacitors. So maybe that's all is wrong with it. I'm not getting any display, and I don't know about the high voltage. I don't want to arc it. I don't want to arc it to the um, chassis. This is the high voltage right here. Now let me try to read that for you. Okay. 780 volts on the left-hand terminal. I think minus 23 volts on the other terminal. And back at a big one. A ground connection right here and 2400 volts right there. So even though this is a transformer, you can see it's got screws in there. I don't know how the hell you're supposed to be able to service it. And there's the frequency uh, uh, control right there. I, had, I turned that with the scope on. It didn't do anything. It didn't bring up anything on the screen and nothing. So I don't know whether that's a frequency adjustment for the high voltage, which I kind of think maybe that's what it would be, or that's a frequency adjustment for your line. In other words, if you're running it on 400 cycles, it would adjust that to 400 cycles. I could be way off base on this. And another thing, too, is I don't think you can buy these. And this plug is virtually impossible. Uh, I would probably hardwire a three-prong plug in there. There is three connections. One of them goes right to the chassis, and the other is the uh, hot and the neutral. So um, I can make some kind of a connector, but i got to pull all this out, and it's even got a bathtub capacitor up in the top inside there. Okay, so this is going to be my next project after I finish Bob's radio. It's a shame. It looks like somebody got mad and smashed that. I mean, that's that's got to be deliberate. It's hammered in. So who knows? They didn't break the tube because I, I, I can see the filament lighting. Unless it knocked some elements loose in the tube, and maybe that's why it's not working. There was a, what looks like a 47 pilot light here. That did light. And the gradical light control is right here. You probably cannot see that too well. So I put some light on the subject here, and I'm always pushing the wrong side of the flashlight here. 
All right, so that's the radical, and uh, it's a uh, number 47, but <laughs> you'd never be able to get a bulb in there. You can't push and twist it. You know, I swear, they, they, these manufacturers of these um, oscilloscopes make them so they cannot be serviced. So this might, and I don't have much faith in my stuff. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I don't have much faith in my repairabilities. If some things that look too hard to work on, I usually give up on it. Um, even simple things like removing this this uh, plug-in. Something is holding it. It isn't this. So, so uh, anyways, we'll give it a try. That's all we can do. And it's going to be a, a video series that will probably start after I finish Bob's radio over here. I may work on it from time to time, and if I do that, I'll probably videotape a little bit of it. And that's it. So if I can get a schematic for this, it would sure help, but a service manual would be even better, but I, I'm not going to go out and spend $25, $30 for a service manual on a scope that may be DOA. Thanks for watching. More to come.